everybody, this is Deanna Bailey with the Texas Blockchain Council, and I am here with the amazing Samantha Lewis from Mercury Fund. Hi, Samantha. Hi, thank you so much for having me. Yeah, thank you for being here. So, I mean, tell me what you think about this amazing conference. Okay, this is so much fun. First of all, I love being in person, so I'm very glad that we were able to do that. Um, it's really interesting uh, as an investor to sit down and really think about where the future of the industry is going, and a huge part of that, um, whether we all like it or not, is how um, the politicians are thinking about it and how our policy is going to shape up for it. And so it's uh, incredibly important for our investment thesis to make sure that we are as educated as possible yeah, about what agree. the regulatory environment is going to shake out to be. And I'm just learning so much about that right now. Yeah, I mean, and I agree. And I feel like in the U.S. where it has been so lacking to be in this room with all of these you know, government people and yes. just seeing them engaged. I mean, how, how does that make you feel about the future of this industry? It was really exciting to me. I actually just found out about the conference a few weeks ago and I look at the lineup and I was like, wow, <laughs> like the type of engagement that we're getting from our politicians yeah. is really good. And like, we need that. Yes. We need people in the room having the discussions. I agree. And it's like, we don't know where it's going to land, yeah. but it needs to land somewhere and we need to figure out where it's going to land so we can keep innovating. And so I love that everyone's in the room together having the discussion. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. And I mean, I don't, in the rest of the U.S., I feel like other states are still just fighting about getting their footing after yeah. COVID. And it seems like Texas is just embracing this. And I mean, the economy is doing well here in Texas, yeah. right? Like, I mean, we moved a bunch of miners here and we've got investors coming and there's just so many different applications that it's, it's fun to see it play yeah. out, right? It, it is really fun. And to be able to hear one of the things I didn't realize is just how much Texas is making a footprint already compared to other states. And so sure. I learned that today. And uh, that makes me happy that I'm in Texas, yeah. for sure. So what, what did you hear that like impressed you the most? I guess all the mining operations. Yeah. So uh, just for some background, Mercury Fund invests in software companies. Okay. And so everything we do is digital. Uh, we're right now exploring what our blockchain thesis will be. Uh, we invested in Topple Protocol, which I know you got to interview someone from there yeah, earlier. Yeah, she's amazing. Yeah, yeah she's so great. Um, so Aaron actually just joined Topple. But yeah, so we are... We're excited about Topple, and then we're excited about seeing where else we can invest in the blockchain yeah. space. Um, but mining just isn't one of those things because of the hardware aspect of it. Sure. And so uh, it's one of the things I just haven't kept a pulse on. Yeah. And so I was able to learn a lot about it today, and then there are some like really interesting digital strategies around it too. Yeah, so for sure. So looking forward to exploring that as I go. Yeah, I mean, I think as, as bad as it was for Bitcoin that China shut down the miners, it was great for Texas, <laughs> right? <laughs> yes. So come on, just come yeah. on with us. Well, and I'm from New Mexico, so I know what we're talking about when we are like, there is a lot of empty space out in southeastern New Mexico and oh, West yeah. Texas and what's going on over there. Oh, yeah. And I just keep hearing, now that I've started to ask around, People are like, yeah, there's there's mining farms here. Now that we're starting to see that, just like we start to see windmills everywhere, right? Yeah, yeah, thank God too. And it's and I've interviewed some really interesting people about all these different ways to use energy. Like one guy could take trash and, and make it into energy, and yeah. that energy could mine Bitcoin, and you're just like, what? I was like, it sounds like back to the future stuff, I know, right? it like, really does. Never thought I'd have these conversations. I know. Okay, so you said you're an investor. Give yes. me a little bit about your background. How'd you get into that? So I started two companies right after undergrad. One is in the food logistics space. Okay. Okay. And so I think I told you this earlier, um, but if you've ever eaten at Torchy's Tacos. Yes, fantastic, um, you by have, the way. Yeah, so good. Eat at Torchy's if you haven't yet. Um, but they use a lot of our products. And so we contract out with different manufacturing plants. We bring all of their products, all their food products under our brand. And then we do all the sales and logistics for that. Nice. So I have a very um, keen interest in supply chain and okay. logistics okay. and agri-food. Okay. And so that kind of led me to start exploring blockchain in the early days around 2016, 2017. Right. And then led me to eventual investment in Topple. Nice. Um, because Topple has a really interesting agri-food angle to it. Yeah, as for well. sure. For sure. And so so that's the food company. And then I started a beauty company. Oh, is it underachiever, huh? Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> so I started a beauty company. I ended up selling that one when I got into Rice to go back to get my MBA. So I went and got my MBA from Rice. And then from there, really focused on tech startups yeah. and the scalability of technology yep. and how that really can be so much more impactful yes. um, using technology, right, to not just scale companies and make a lot of money, but right. also so much more impactful for what you're trying to achieve in the world. Yeah. And um, so what I want to invest in now as an investor, jumped over to the investing side about four years ago, um, 
are those companies that are using technology for actual change. Right. And and not and positive change. Right. Yeah. Positive so, change. So like tell me some of the things you've seen. This is your space, these are the things like what kind of projects have you seen that really get you excited about? Yeah, well, is it too much to talk about Topple again? No, I just <laughs> talk about Topple all day. Okay. I get really excited about Topple. So I've been involved with Topple for three and a half years. Wow. I've been on their board. It was very early days uh, <laughs> when I got involved with Topple. Uh, they are killing it now. And so what Topple does is they are a layer one blockchain okay. built to um, track and prove ethical and sustainable practices. Um, they can tokenize carbon. They can do a yeah. lot of other things around sustainability. And I'm just really excited for them to continue to explore those use cases. And then what those use cases are actually getting adopted by the market. Because yes. the market cares about ESG. And right. the market cares about the SDGs now, the UN Sustainability Goals. Right. And so being able to actually have a blockchain technology prove the claims is Huge. paramount yeah. to me for like true true adoption to happen. Yes, I would agree. So one of the themes on the theme that I lead at Mercury, we call it the power theme, and it's all about empowering people. So it's using technology and tools to empower people. And that means creating access to capital, creating access to opportunity, to knowledge, to data. Um, one of the things is consumer behavior yes. is completely changing. Oh, yeah. And consumer expectations are completely changing. And that's driven in large part by social unrest, by uh, more millennials having more and more money, by Gen Z coming into the workplace. Right. Um, and just by us all taking a look and saying, okay, our planet is dying, <laughs> right? We need to do things to protect our planet. Um, so then I want to know that what I buy, what I wear, what I eat, who I work for, all cares about the same things I care about. Right. And so how do we make sure companies aren't lying to us? Right? And blockchain is a key piece. Wait, 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 wait. Companies lie to us? I know. Are you crazy, kidding right? me? Um, yeah. Greenwashing being one of the, the words. Um, but yeah, so I think technology is super powerful to actually allow the companies that are doing what they say they do yep. to really leverage that. And then you can make a lot more money. Yeah. You can charge more. Your margins are higher. It's, uh, it's a win-win really for everyone. Yeah. And blockchain's a key piece of that. Intertwine blockchain into it and you have these huge social impacts out yeah. of it. I know, and um, that social impact, I think it's key, and we always talk about this in our investment team room, right? Social impact actually is a massive opportunity in a capitalistic world as well. There is ways to also capitalize on making money, yeah. uh, making money, sorry, on the technology, right. but doing good with that. Right. And so like, they don't have to be separate, and I think this is um, a new, it's a new concept people are getting more and more used to. Yeah. That like you don't have to sacrifice profit for purpose. Right. And so I think blockchain, if blockchain's done right and we continue to do it right, it really is just power to the people. Right. Right. And it's allowing us to make our own choices about what we want. And I truly believe human nature wants to make the, the right choices right. for ourselves, for our future, for our future generations. Yeah. Um, I know, I, I believe Texas actually has a supply chain program where they're tracking peanuts from Mexico oh, really? to guarantee that like the money that's going to this peanut farm is really being spent on the peanuts and the peanuts are coming from this farm. And Amazing. Like, I mean, but you wouldn't even think of something like that, yes. right? Like, but, but then not even just the proof of the supply chain, but when you have a salmonella outbreak or you mm -hmm. have something that taints that, yeah. like how do you really identify the things that are contaminated how can you wrap your hands around? I mean, you get these social recalls and it's like, oh, you got this package of food, this salmonella, everybody's rolled away, I right? Know. And then you just gotta go buy more. Massive amount of food waste, which is terrible for the environment, right? right? The plastic is yes. in. Yes, exactly. And so it's, um, I come from an agriculture family as well. So very familiar with the track and trace and what's what we're trying to do around that. Um, but Topple also does that. So they take it a, a step further as well though. So if they're coffee beans, for example, they track the supply chain but then whenever the farmer drops off the coffee beans at the, at the auction or the exchange, they actually can verify via SMS that they were paid a living wage for that. And so then that opens up so many possibilities because now me drinking the coffee right. know right. that the people who farm that coffee were paid a living wage. Right. And then on top of that, that eventually can be used for financial inclusion. Right. 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 You can eventually build up credit on that. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So, which allows all of these other farmers 
to then start being able to expand their business if they want. Yeah. Do you guys have it tied in completely digitally yet? So it's like almost a smart contract execution as soon as that as soon as that SMS comes in that it was done, the, the digital payment is sent and it's yeah. like a real ugh, that's so forward thinking. That's yeah. so fantastic. Yeah, so that's the plan. Right now we're in pilots yep. and um, starting to get all the early use cases on the blockchain. Yeah. Yeah, I do think people underestimate. I mean, if everybody's a little scared about digital payments, and as people start to embrace it, they haven't even conceived the fact that, like, once things are done, it can just be executed, and you don't need like maybe maybe Mary's sick one day and she can't hit the pay button to yeah. this guy, and now it's delayed a day, or something happens when you when you start embedding it into this code and you start making it all digital, it just becomes a more profoundly efficient system. Yes, more profoundly efficient allows people to take more control yes. <laughs> over their own capital, yes. right? That they labored for. Right. And um, and then choose what they want to do with, to make it localized to ourselves and the consumer who's actually utilizing. It's so exciting. I know. I no, love it. I, I just love it. This I is why it. VC is so fun. This is why entrepreneurship and technology is so fun. And ultimately blockchain. Yeah. So I'm really excited to figure out where Mercury is going to land with our blockchain thesis. And so that's why I'm here, just continuing to explore, continuing to learn watching the regulatory environment very yeah. closely yeah. and um, meeting everyone. So I'm trying to meet with as many startups in the space as possible yeah. and really just figure out, you know, which way which way the winds are blowing. I love it. I love it. Well, in Texas, you know, they're blowing everywhere, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, it's everywhere. Especially in West Texas. Right? Yeah. Oh, I have to drive that. I go So I go through New Mexico because I drive to Colorado all the time. Nice. Um, and so, like, there is just so much land. So do you, you drive through there. Roswell with the aliens? I would. You know, where I, well, I cut off under 25. Okay. So, okay, so but no, is there aliens don't. in Roswell? Is, well, is that Area 51? Yes. Yeah. And that's where I was born. Oh. So sometimes people are like, uh -oh. yeah, it all starts to make uh -oh. sense now. <laughs> I love it. I know. Um, so I know you're not a member of the council yet. I'm not, but, but I will be right after today. Right? I mean, did this not prove to you the benefits yes. of like the association? It's just Absolutely. incredible what Lee has done. It is. And I yeah. love that you're in Houston. I love that the talk, that everything that I've heard today about the Texas Blockchain Council truly is about Texas. Yes. And so I think that is so important from the innovation community and the tech community that Texas is the story, yes. not specific cities, because we all have something so different to offer. Agreed. Right? And so yep. pulling all of us together yes. um, for the for the goals of the state and the goals of the innovation in the state is really important. Yes. And today I'm very encouraged. I'm meeting just as many people from Houston as I am, as I um, am meeting from Austin haven't met as many Dallas folks, but I'm sure I will. I'm they're, just going to go find them somewhere everywhere. in the room. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, same with everywhere else in the state. So yeah. I love that this was truly bringing the state together um, and not just a city. Yeah, we, we actually have three meetups, um, in, in one in Austin, one in Dallas, and one in Houston. So we do it once a month. Yes. So Well, I will be there. Yeah, well, good. And bring now friends. Now you can't get rid bring of me. Well, okay. <laughs> Yay! Is it, I know, right? I hope like a couple months from now, I don't think I'll be regretting that, but yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> even like I, I told you. I know, I know. I drink good wine and I love good coffee. Oh, so done. like, you know, done. If, if those things are there, I'll be there. Done. And then she can prove that it's good wine and good coffee on the exactly. supply chain. So oh, I'm, I'm double so happy. excited. About Where do we think the world is going to be, especially with consumer preferences and behavior in 10 years from now and start building your blockchain application based on that? Right. Especially in the agriculture industry, right? right? Like, are people always going to continue to care about sustainability? I think even more so as we continue to feel the ramifications of climate change. And so it's like, okay, well then how can we start building now right. um, for food safety and security, but also to prove sustainable practices? Yeah, right? I, I completely agree. Yeah, or, you know, ethical treatment of the animals if it's in the livestock industry. Yes, oh, for and sure. So we, uh, we're doing a lot of that. There's a really interesting dairy play. So I'm really excited about what's happening in the agriculture scene. Yeah, you know, and there, just sorry that we keep derailing or staying on track about food, but not tracking this stuff yeah. could, could fix. Yeah, and well, it's tracking, but then let's take it even another angle, right? It's making sure that people have access to the knowledge yes. so that they can be making those choices. Agreed. And so that's one of the things that I think it's like, one, it needs to be tracked. Right? And then two, people also need to understand what is being tracked and why that's being tracked. Right. And I think that there's some really interesting applications around that as well. Yeah, I completely agree. Yeah. In every industry, but I know we keep getting excited about food, but food is, food is so important. 
to well, humanity. It's everything, right? Yes, it's your it's health, everything. it's how you look, it is important. Exactly. It's super important. For sure. Yeah. Was well, there anything you want to leave our audience with before we... Yes, I would love to meet everyone in the startup blockchain space. So if you are interested in raising money, reach out to me, would love to hear from you. Uh, we invest in seed to Series A companies, and we are based in Houston with an office in Austin and Michigan. So we, uh, we love Texas. Yeah, woohoo, go Texas. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> awesome, well thank you so much for taking the time, thank I appreciate it. I know, it was so much fun. I know.